Dears and friends, on behalf of my independent civil society organization called the Brotherhood for Democracy in Vietnam, I would like to give thanks to the Asian People Forum to provide me a chance to speak by this video. And I want to go directly to the point which I would like to bring to all of you today. As you may know, ASEAN One Civil Society Forum cannot be accomplished without the participation of the independent civil society organizations from Vietnam. As the delegates have heard the crying out voice from the Vietnamese CSOs for help, and you may have noticed, most of the independent Vietnamese CSOs cannot attend the conference due to the state's interference and encroachment into our rights and mission. I understand that in the Asian organization, there is a non-interference policy in place, and if I am correct, that principle has been accepted and introduced since the exception of Asian in August of 1967. However, as one scholar pointed out that the non-interference policy has often been used as a tool for legitimizing state behavior in the interest of the dominant political and economic elite. And that is exactly the case in pointing the current crackdown by the Vietnamese communist region. It is a detrimental to us as a grassroots movement in this highly controlled region. For so many years, Vietnam, Vietnam authoritarian region has been hiding under the non-interference pol policy to apply an iron hand on its citizens and some newly found civil groups, and we see very little criticism from the Asian member states. Uniquely, most of the criticism laid against Vietnam are from the non-member states. It tells us and has proved to us that the Asian non-interference policy is working well and the Vietnamese regime is working fearlessly just to ensure the policy is sustainable. Asian One Civil Society Forum could be meaningless if the voice of more than 90 million people are not heard by the regional leaders. How can an organization with such a manager with so many talented people and leaderships will stand by, but voice is very little concerned when these 90 million Vietnamese people have been denied to raise their concern as a major shareholder in the wider regional interest? Only ASEAN can answer that question. Civil society should be a helping of state a complement to state's policies and advance the public interest, the reason for its existence. But, as we know, almost all public policy in Vietnam have read rarely solicited opinion from the people whom have a major stake. Several society groups may have political motivation too, such as the Green Party in the West. They start from protecting their environment and resources, but when our interests are not met, or the state is too slow to react to the problem, the Green Party see their interests are not met when they stay outside the policy-making circle. So, they form the political party to press some decisions making from the state. Green Party is very powerful in Europe. The whole problem of Asia is 
the its policy of non-interference. Unlike EU, ASEAN has little moral standard. When it comes to ethics, even Malaysia now has taken a tough line against those who criticize the state which allows some states or members to suppress the civil society. And Vietnam loves the non-interference policy so much because it allows Vietnam to treat its citizens poorly without suffering from any consequences of criticism. EU members cannot do that. You would be kicked out of EU if you are violating EU's political or human rights policies. As far as I know, the Philippines and Indonesia are the most democratic nations in Asia, but they cannot criticize Vietnam's handling of the civil society. Asian should be not just a forum for photo ops. Another current condition, the unity showing among Asian leaders are mostly for window dressing when the true voice of our people are denied or are suppressed. Our women are curbed by the police. Our young girls have been denied with basic education. All of these have been swept under the carpet in the name of Asian unity. We are no longer tolerate that condition prevail and we want to take our fate into our own hands. We want to be the master of our own home. I'm calling for Asian One Civil Society Forum to call on Vietnamese government to allow more freedom for domestic domestic independent civil society groups to participate in the society and less interference from the state. ASEAN One Forum should form a panel or working group to monitor the activities among the CSOs in Vietnam. I am asking the ASEAN People Forum to pursue the spirit of the 2013 joint statement nobly when it is calling for Asian governments to create Asian Human Rights Court, urge Asian governments that have not yet established national human rights in institutions to do so. Call for the immediate release for those imprisoned or forcibly disappeared. Vietnam has not set up a human rights commission of its own despite of the fact that it is sitting on the UN Human Rights Council until 2016. Thank you for your attention.